Good morning, Chicago State University. My name is Renard Singleton. I'm a Student Government Association President here at the Chicago State University. So let me welcome our students, faculty, staff, administration, and guests. Today to the State of the University address given by our own Madam President Z. Scott. First, I'd like to also welcome our first speaker, our Board of Trustee, Mr. Nicholas Gold. Thank you. My name is Nicholas Gowen. I'm the chair of the Chicago State University Board of Trustees. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you all here for our first annual, hopefully, State of the University address given by our president. This is the opportunity for our president to lay out her vision for the year ahead of us, to lay out her goals, her dreams, her aspirations, and her expectations. There's been a lot of change on this campus in the last six months since she showed up last July. There's been a more positive attitude from faculty, staff, and students. There's more positive external attention. And a focus is on the brighter days ahead and not the negativity of the past. The Board of Trustees selected a non-traditional candidate because we believe that we would be bringing something different to this campus that the campus needed at this time. But let us not forget that there is more work ahead of us for all of us to do. Not just the people on this stage, not just for students, but for faculty and staff as well. Remember, we are an urban institution and we are living in uncertain political and economic times. We must continue to fight so that the world knows the CSU matters. It matters to our students, it matters to our community, and it matters to the state of Illinois. CSU is rising, our future is bright, our students will excel, and we have strong leadership. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. I um, want we stand at this time and um, reach out and touch the hand of your neighbor. We're not going to go to the Lord in prayer, but we are going to <laughs> we're going to sing our alma mater. <laughs> if you don't know the words, which everyone should, it's going to be on the back of this handout that we all have been given. But but you have to know the words if you're going to hold hands. Okay, y'all ready? As they say in elementary school, we can all sing together, but we can't. Yeah, yeah, some of you are still talking. <laughs> okay, let's ready. <clears throat> Here's to Chicago, evergreen and white. Hail CSU, where we can reach the height. Proudly we raise all our voices to you. Helping each other to make it through. Let's sway honor and glory, telling our story, keeping our mission so true. Honor and glory, we'll tell the story, lifting our voices to CSU. LCSU, where all our dreams come true. Meeting the challenge, making old things new. Onward and upward, we'll proudly sing. All our devotion, we'll gladly bring. Honor and glory, telling our story. Keeping our mission so true, honor and glory, we'll tell the story, lifting our voices to CSU. As we endeavor to achieve our goal, may we continue with a joyful soul. Fondly availing our school's brave heart. With adoration we shall impart honor and glory. Telling our story, keeping our mission.
mission so true, honor and glory, we'll tell the story, lifting our voices to see. As you, ow! Hey, hey, hey. Thank you. Good afternoon, Chicago State. I am Dr. Leslie Roundtree, and I am your interim provost and vice president of academic and student affairs. <laughs> Thank you. It is with great excitement that I introduce President Z. Scott, who will be delivering the State of the University Address. Z. Scott became the 12th permanent president of Chicago State University on July 1st of last year after being unanimously approved by the University Board of Trustees. I first attended my first meeting with President Scott um, operations meeting and I had been warned that I was going to sing the alma mater. <laughs> I thought I was being punked as the new member. However, we came to the meeting and she passed out the words. And we started the meeting with the alma mater. I've come to realize we have a woman of purpose here. She has a reason. And so I'm a little frightened that we might be singing in parts in a, in a little bit, but <laughs> with, I'm, I'm with her. In a few moments, President Scott will share with you her student-centered vision for the university and the communities that we serve. But I just want to acknowledge that we are happy to have a strong and positive individual leading our university. Ever since she hit the ground running on her first day, you can feel and see the extraordinary energy on this campus. Before I bring President Scott up to speak to you about her impressive professional, I'd like to address her impressive professional background demonstrating how she is prepared to lead Chicago State University. President Scott is a distinguished public servant, a business and civic leader, and has played an influential role in Chicago over 30 years. Prior to her current role, she has held other government roles. President Scott spent more than 16 years as an assistant U.S. attorney in the Northern District of Illinois where she served as Chief of General Crime Section. She also served as Illinois' first Executive Inspector General for the agencies of the governor and public universities, developing the United States' first statewide compliance organization and ethics training platform for state government employees. President Scott has also taught at some of the nation's most prestigious law schools, including Northwestern's University School of Law, the University of Chicago Law School, and John Marshall Law School. President Scott was ser has served on several nonprofits and civic boards. She served on the board of Chicago State University from 2010 to 2013 and held the role as vice chair. She is a former chair of trustee chair of the Board of Trustees of the Chicago Housing Authority, the nation's third largest housing authority. She also previously served on the Board of Visitors at Indiana University Maurer School of Law. Currently, President Scott serves on the Board of Directors for Ann and Robert H. Lorry Children's Hospital Medical Board, where she chairs the board's diversity subcommittee. President Scott's leadership has been recognized many times by organizations that include the Black Women Lawyers Association, Larabita Hospital, Larabita Hospital, and most recently, as we are all aware, by Crane Chicago Business Ma Magazine, who named her one of the 25 most powerful women in business.
President Scott holds a law degree from Indiana University Maurer School of Law and a Bachelor of Science degree in Journalism from the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana. Please join me in giving the warmest welcome to the President of Chicago State University, Z. Scott. Dr. Roundtree, uh, thank you for your introduction. Your words uh, are appreciated. And to our board chair, uh, Nicholas Gowen, and our student trustee, thank you for your continued support and confidence in my administration. Each of you has worked tirelessly in support of the university, and for that, we are grateful. To the student leaders, who are here today. I love it when the Miss CSU wears her crown. Uh, and, to our, and to our students, faculty, and staff, I appreciate your unwavering support that you devote to this university. This is not an easy job. To the members of my administration, in the past last months, you have supported my work. You have worked hard. You have gone without sleep. You have been tireless, and you have been creative, and thank you for that. <laughs> to, to Senator L.G. Sims, my former uh, law firm colleague, who is now our state senator supporting uh, our university, thank you for your presence here today, and thank you for your support. <laughs> and to my family, who put up with me, I could not be standing here today without your love, unwavering support, and extreme patience. I am humbled and honored to serve as the 12th permanent president of Chicago State University. I was selected by the Board of Trustees during a critical time in the history of this university. I can tell you over the past six months in this role, I have developed a sense of pride in CSU and I know that our future is bright. As reflected in our history, we have made incredible contributions to the community and to the graduates who have gone on from this university. Our contributions are not only felt in the city, they're felt throughout the state and throughout the world. And, if, and most of you know our history. Our history started in a, a small teacher's college in a railroad box car, a replica of which sits on our campus in a place of prominence to remind us of our roots. Since that time, we have graduated thousands of people and opened the door to the middle class and opened and enriched our communities. The story of Chicago State is one that is grounded in hard work, a sense of purpose, dedication, and commitment. Each chapter of our rich history represents grit and resilience, and that's a story not too unlike my own. This afternoon, I want to talk to you about the current state of our university. In some things, the news is good. In others, you all know that we have more work to do. The story of Chicago State is similar to my own. And as, I tell, and as I talk to you, I want to tell you what I've been up to the last six months. Before I took the job, I promised the Chicago Tribune and I promised the Chicago State community that I would go on a listening tour. And many of you, you in this room has, have sat in the boardroom in the president's office, and I've sat in various faculty meetings talking to you, listening to you, and hearing from you as you talked about your personal experiences with Chicago State. You told me things that you wanted me to know, to hear, and to consider. And I appreciate the time and the opportunities for sharing with you. I also learned a lot about the university from my presidential transition committee, with whom many of you, many of you met with members of that committee. That committee began its work in July and was composed of 33 business leaders from all segments of our community who were volunteering our, their time to Chicago State. And after five months of work, they gave me 
their observations, recommendations, sharing their concerns and sharing their and sharing information on how we could enhance our school, improve our university and its operations. Like I said, these things have allowed me to understand the current state of the university to shape a vision and plan for our future. In, the, in concluding my address today, I will tell you what my vision is for Chicago State, and I will share more information with you about my values that I, and things that I think we need to do to enhance our university and its status among the other public universities in the state. Well, let me talk a little bit about me so that you know where I came from. I was born in Shreveport, Louisiana. Anybody out there heard of Shreveport? There are a few of you. At the time, Shreveport was the second largest city uh, in, in Louisiana. And I was the youngest of three. My sister is here today. <laughs> Life in the Shreveport, Louisiana community where I grew up was controlled by Jim Crow laws that mandated the separation of white and black residents in public schools private offices and public accommodations. I grew up going in the back door. The back door of movie theaters. The back door of, law, of, of, of doctor's offices. The back seat of the bus. Now you say to yourself, how old is she? <laughs> Didn't in 1954, the United States Supreme Court declared that separate but un unequal was unlawful? Yes, they did, but the good people of Shreveport, Louisiana did not follow the law. Instead, they kept in place Jim Crow laws that kept us separated. But my parents were not standing for that and their th three daughters. My parents and other parents in Shreveport advocated, filed lawsuits that led to the desegregation of the schools. And at the age of 10 in fourth grade, 14 years after the Supreme Court's ruling, I went to an integrated school for the first time. I left my neighborhood school where it was a block and a half away from my house and went all the way across town to another classroom where I was the only black student in the class. Many of the students who had learned at their feet of their parents about racism and segregation were not happy to see me. And I wanna tell you that this is one of the most profound and instructive times in my life. I felt at close range what it meant to be different. I felt the hostility of students. And the teacher, who, in, who at the eight, at, in my fourth grade class, spent the entire year calling me a negress. This was an early and tough experience that I came through with grit and resilience. That is the same grit and resilience I see in our staff, our faculty, and the students in this university. You have the gift of grit and the gift of resilience. Now, what does that mean? Grit has been defined as the passion and perseverance essential for achievement of long-term goals. It can involve working through challenges over a period of years against tremendous odds, unquote. Passion, perseverance, challenges, tremendous odds. In life, we all know that things are often not fair, particularly when you are a minority. All of us are talented, but access to opportunities is not always given on the basis of talent. And we know that here at Chicago State. And our goal as faculty and administrators is to ensure that our students are given all of the opportunities a quality education can bring despite the odds and despite the, the things that could be stacked against success. Now we are on the South Side. A lot of people say a lot of negative attention about the South Side, right? And some of you know that I am a South Sider. In fact, my commitment to the South Side and living on the South Side is not new. When my parents moved here from, from Louisiana when I was in eighth grade, we moved to the Southeast Side. I grew up in the same neighborhood as Trustee Gowen, Jeffrey Manor. That's not that far from here. I went to a public high school here in Chicago. 
I used the 95th L stop for my transportation long before it was called the red line and long before it was renovated. I never left the south side. I went to church here. I live here. I got married here and have raised our, and my husband and I have raised our two children on the south side. Now, in a recent letter about the south side that was written by our former first lady, Michelle Obama, she wrote about growing up on the south side of Chicago, recognizes that some people are often uninformed and misguided and say harsh things about our community. And she wanted to make the point that these people don't know who we are. And oftentimes when people talk about Chicago State, they don't know who we are. But we want to make sure that we start to tell our story, our story of grit and resilience, our story that finds us on 161 acres of beautiful, picturesque land, land. The president of the University of Illinois came to visit Chicago State University. How many of you know whether the president of the University of Illinois has ever visited Chicago State? He came out here with his executive vice president of the entire university system to sit down and talk to us about what we had going on. And he said to me and my chief of staff, Ryan Green, I didn't know you had all this going on over here. It is time for us to tell our story. I believe that we got to this point in our history because of our resilience and also the support of the community and our legislators. We are a public university. People like former uh, Senate President Emil Jones, former Senator Donnie Trotter, our own Senator L.G. Sims, and our representative Nick Smith, who is a uh, Chicago State alum. They believe in us. They believed in us, and they support us. And they are with us every day, and we appreciate their tremendous support. Now, when I was appointed president, people came to me and said, oh, you're up for a challenge, right? And they said to me, why would you take that job? I took this job because I am being faithful to what my steps, who is ordering my steps. I, I started last year as a partner in a large law firm, sitting on the 30th floor of an office space, looking out my window on the view of the Chicago River. You know, I had all the resources a law firm partner could, could have. There are not many black female law firm partners. In fact, we only constitute 1% of all of the partners in large law firms, 1%. So if two of us on, are on an airplane and something happens, it, is, it, would, it might not be a good thing. But as I was filling out my timesheets in January of last year, something washed over me, and it said, this is not your highest and best use. And I shook it off, and I called one of my close friends, and I said, and I was explaining to her what happened, and she said, well, maybe it's time for you to think about doing something else. But I shoved that off, and I went back to work. And then I, one day I went to a, a luncheon of the Black Women Lawyers Association. And I was sitting in the audience, and there was a, a woman uh, on a panel discussion about being on boards, and she was the president of Tennessee State University. And she talked about transitioning from being a business person to being a university president. It had never occurred to me that there was a path. And then the, something washed over me again, it, and that was, this is the job you should apply for. And I'm being faithful, and I'm here. And I thank you for that support. But when I took this job, the university, I knew the university had been gone through pain. Our brand had been hurt. Our reputation was tarnished. And we had gone through an incredible financial crisis. Our future was uncertain. Our enrollment had dropped. And the university had almost closed. But Chicago State, I have a message for you today. 
this is a new day for Chicago State University. And I am excited to tell you that our best days are ahead. Just like the students we serve, we are resilient. We have persevered through struggle, beat tremendous odds, and have come out on the other side a stronger organization. We are still here, and now it is our time to rise. How many of you heard that, um, that uh, presentation by Maxine, Representative Maxine Waters when she kept saying, reclaiming my time, reclaiming my time, reclaiming my time. We are reclaiming our territory. <laughs> have, have you been down 95th Street, Street and seen our signs? Have you been on Cottage Grove and seen our signs? Have you been on Stony Island and seen our signs? Have you been on 87th Street and seen our signs? We are reclaiming our territory and our space and our place in higher education. But what do we need to do to rise? To find out the answer to that question, my transition team helped me. They talked, they convened, spoke focus groups, and one of those focus groups included talking to, to our students. Now, generally, I think we do well by our students. We offer them a world-class education and a quality campus experience. Our services include tutoring, counseling, organizations, career counseling, and access to travel aboard, just to name a few, a few things. But we must do more. College attendance and classroom learning does not guarantee success in this day. Students told the transition team that they wanted to see improved classrooms, improved technology, improved student spaces. This is true. Our campus has aged. Our wireless technology is sometimes challenged. And our students, to be kind, <laughs> and our student spaces are dated. Likewise, we have prepared students to learn, but our graduation rates need to improve. Our efforts around student life need to get better. And our retention of students needs to be more focused. We need to engage with our students from the time they submit to application until the time they move on from Chicago State to a career. That's what it's going to take. Now I asked, um, no, I asked, I asked Dr. Roundtree uh, in her role as, leader as leadership of academic affairs to create and preside over a student success task force. This task force will take a fresh look at our processes and environment to identify new opportunities to further enhance the educational experience of our students, both inside and outside of the classroom. This class task force will be looking at factors that could impede your success as students, identifying strategies for improving the retention, improved grades, shortening the time to graduation, financial literacy, and, imp and uh, career outcomes. Now, we're not doing this as a shot in the dark. Last semester, a group of eight members of my administration and faculty traveled to Georgia State University to see for themselves what this university has done to beat the odds, to, to show that students who come from challenges can graduate in great rates and in great numbers. Georgia State has been successful and they have been recognized for their efforts in this regard. And we are bringing some of the information that we learned at Georgia State to our processes here. There have been other changes that have been immediately put in place. We've hired additional counselor for the counseling office. We've improved the skills that we need to run our abilities office. We've increased the availability of tutoring, and we've, we're going to put more focus on workforce preparation so that students who leave here can have better success after graduation. We also plan to update and improve our classroom and facilities. With an increase in student fees, don't boo, 
beginning in the fall of this, this year, we intend to upgrade two classrooms per year, employing state-of-the-art design and technology. Now, teaching and instruction in higher education has involved, evolved, and we want to stay current. So I've asked the faculty to consider implementing a course on data as a general education requirement. You cannot do anything now in any space, in any industry, without an understanding of how to use, manipulate, source, and understand data. And we, and we heard your concerns about the reliability of technology. You know that our technology resources were decimated by a lack of a budget. Our technology staff was cut in half, and then we lost additional talent. We hosted a technology survey, and you gave us important feedback. The survey was designed by a consultant who offered his services to the campus free. And to improve our technology on campus, we're hiring more technology professionals who have enhanced skill sets and who will support our current staff. And we're hiring a consultant to help us improve and upgrade our services. Now, we could not do this without dedicated and supportive faculty members. The transition committee was very complimentary of our faculty and talked about their loyalty to the university and students. We have amazing faculty here. We have award winners, prolific authors, researchers who work on groundbreaking projects, and faculty who are volunteers in professional organizations and community organizations. They are here for you as students, and I'd like to give them a hand. And now our faculty also received some unsolicited recognition. Our university, the public universities across this nation were evaluated in their equity and ability to educate African-American students. Chicago State received a grade of A, and we were, we were ranked number one of all public universities in Illinois. And we know that this is in part due to the work of our faculty. We must do more to support the work of the faculty. I was in a meeting with Dr. Roundtree. Uh, we, had, we were meeting with a group who'd come to look at our work in connection with one of our federal grants. And the, the, the team uh, sat down to tell us how great our faculty members were performing in, the res in, uh, in their research on, on the grant. But they told us one thing. They told us we have to do more to support our faculty in research, that we are not giving our faculty sufficient resources to get the job done. And I heard them. And so we have convened another task force that will be devoted to looking at how faculty members can develop grants and research and how much time we need to allow faculty members to do this. The work of that, transit, that uh, task force is due to me on April 1st, because I always impose deadlines. But I also want our faculty to travel. I want them to go out and be among their peers to work with others, to talk to others, and come back to us, because this will improve the outcome of our students. This is equity. Now, most of you know I was appointed to the transition uh, committee on education success that was convened by our new governor, uh, J.B. Pritzker. Uh, and, I, and I felt fortunate to be in, in the room because there were only two public university presidents who were in the room, and I was one of them. And the conversation was about how can we take the scarce resources available for education 
and distributed them in a way that was equitable. Because if you're at the University of Illinois and somebody shows up with a 35 on the ACT, a 4.0, and graduated from New Trier, that's a different outcome. It's a different set of circumstances. But we're giving University of Illinois the same kind of money that you give Chicago State when sometimes the job is just a little harder. That committee determined that that was not equitable. <laughs> it has been proven that it is more difficult to graduate from college if you are a first generation college student. It has been proven that it is more difficult to graduate from college if you are limit, living with factors that limit your access to resources. Students in that profile need more support. It is only fair. Access to better resources that can only come from our state legislator. So that is part of our legislative agenda. We have asked the state for more money to fund our programs around student success. And we are confident that our state senator <laughs> will support us in that request. I want to talk of just a few minutes about things that we are leading on. When I came to the campus, I was, one of the first things I had to do is I had to go to a hearing on supplier diversity. I've been here, I think, three weeks. And I was in a hearing trying to explain to members of the state legislator, legislature why we had not done a better job in being in promoting and using uh, diverse suppliers. So I convened a supplier to diversity task force to look at our procurement practices and figure out how we can do more to support minority and women owned businesses. I've designated a chief compliance officer. Some of the things on our university come from not knowing what the rules are. So our chief compliance officer will help us recognize where the line is and where the lines are that we should not cross. I've, de I've de uh, developed and devote, I mean, appointed a diversity and inclusion function on our campus. There are 28 countries represented on the campus of Chicago State. We need to know how to make sure our unconscious bias doesn't trickle into our conversations with people who are different. And we have finally got our foundation off the ground. They have their <laughs> members, members, elite members of the business community have responded to a recall to join our foundation board, and they have convened their first meeting. They convened their first meeting today. And I am so happy. Now, uh, Dr. Roundtree was kind enough to, to introduce me today, and she's assumed the role of interim provost. And most of you know Dr. Roundtree because of her long, her long history with the university. And I can tell you her support of my administration has been invaluable. Under her leadership, she has reached out to every regulator that touches this university and introduced herself. She has straightened out, straightened out enduring problems. Under her leadership, we have been given permission, permission to launch our first executive MBA program. Thank you, Dean Collins, too. That, pro that, that program will launch in the fall. We've been, been allowed to expand our online class offerings, providing greater flexibility to our students. These are no small feats, and I'm grateful for her work ethic and support. Now, last week we, uh, we had a meeting. Dr. Roundtree has been everywhere with me. Thank you. And last week we, we visited with the mayor of the city of Chicago, Mayor Emanuel. And I just could not have been more proud of how she represented Chicago State and what we were doing here as an institution. And the mayor had his staff around. He was firing off uh, requests to people, take care of that for them, take care of this for them, get that done for them. The mayor 
support Chicago State University and wants to make, make sure that we succeed. Now, our efforts have yielded partnerships that we believe will support the university. We have strengthened our relationship with Chicago Public Schools. The faculty has designed a dual enrollment program where high school students from our neighboring high schools will be able to come here in the fall and earn college grade credits. We have, <laughs> we have strengthened our relationships with city colleges. Juan Salgado, the Chancellor of City, Chicago, of city Colleges, has been on our campus. We are forming a, a, a almost incredible relationship with Olive Harvey that used to be a major feeder of students of Chicago State. All these things are getting done with the help and support and leadership of Dr. Leslie Roundtree. And, and, and here's, here's how you know when you're doing the right thing. You know, sometimes you gotta hunt down people to get them to do things for you. But people are just calling me and saying, can I come see you? The chair of the board of Advocate Aurora Healthcare called me and said, I want to bring my CEO to your campus to talk to you about a partnership. Really? <laughs> now, Advocate Aurora Healthcare is one of the largest healthcare systems in the country. So the CEO came down with his current board chair and his incoming board chair and sat down with us in the room. But we had to prepare for that meeting. And we prepared, and I want to thank the deans who are, in the, who, who are in here today who were part of that preparation process. We worked, we, we, we talked among each other, we tested our themes. Uh, Sabrina Land put together an incredible brochure showing our healthcare practices and education, and it was cross, it was cross collaborative. It was a great process. And at the end, when they came in, not only was I prepared for the meeting, we looked good as a team. And let me talk to you about the outcome. We suggested to Aurora Healthcare that we form a partnership called the Center for Solutions of Urban Populations, where we would look at and research the social determinants of health, and that we would have access to hospitals in that throughout their entire system, including hospitals in Wisconsin that we would provide students with more access to clinical opportunities in their hospitals, that we would provide our business students to, uh, to, uh, to business internships within their hospital systems, and they said yes. <laughs> and I'm really proud of the work that we did as a team. Now I wanna spend a few minutes talking about infrastructure, right? We all are walking over crumbling sidewalks. We've experienced water in our buildings. We have experienced mice running underneath our feet. Let's break it down now. Because it's not just happening to you, it's happening to me. Things are old. Things are leaking. We have developed a comprehensive list of our emergency capital improvements. Two of our maintenance issues, issues were so significant that they were at the top of the list for state capital money when state capital money finally became available at, at late last fall. This was our generator system, our generators and our elevators. We are now, those projects have now been funded for repair. <laughs> and many of you have seen me walk this campus. I have walked down, up and down every step. I have been in and out of offices. I've met you where you are. I'm, I get out of the office. I don't just stay there. And I, I surprise people when I show up. So I know what's wrong. I know what needs repaired. But my chief of staff, who was a, real, who was a former real estate lawyer, used his connections to reach out to a, a global real estate management firm and asked them, to come on campus and give us their expert opinion for free on to help us prioritize our maintenance issues. They came, they've given us a report, and helped us prioritize what needs to happen. And also, 
I've hired a new VP of administrative services and whose part of his job is to look at issues that relate to our maintenance and prioritize those issues, look at our envir environmental concerns and prioritize capital development on campus. Now some of you heard a little bit about my dreams for Chicago State and my dreams for the South Side. First of all, I want to build a hotel on this campus. There is no hotel south of Hyde Park. And we are it. We, I believe a hotel on this campus, supported by a hospitality bachelor's program, would be a good thing for Chicago State and the south side of Chicago. I want us to own 95th Street. I don't. 95th Street should be the south side downtown. And I've asked our general counsel to go about looking at who owns the property across the street. It is time to rise, Chicago State. And one of, one of our state legislators told me in a conversation, he said, we were talking about what, what I needed in terms of a budget. And I told him about my vision my vision for Chicago State, and he said, I'm so glad that you didn't come to me with your hat in hand and say, give me just enough to stay open. That you asked for more. We deserve more. Yeah. So let's, let, let, me, uh, let me close out here. Now, the, um, it's no accident that we planned the State of the University speech to take place on the eve of an important holiday in our community, the, ho the birthday celebration for Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I'm a civil rights baby. Things that Mar I lived Dr. Martin Luther King and, and his legacy. And the lessons he taught are still applied to us today. Dr. King fought for equity, he strove for excellence, and he valued integrity. These are values that we must hold dear. As we work to renew and transform our university, I'm asking you to uphold the values of Dr. King and to fight for equity, strive for excellence, and value your personal integrity. Acting with integrity is important to me and it has always been. Research shows that an organization that has high ethical standards for itself is an ethical organization and more successful. That means we can no longer look the other way when something does not look right. I don't want anyone else to tell me how to get around something. How I, if I slant, pitch, move, that things will, can go a different way. That's done. It is over. We cannot and should not expect anything but excellence in everything that we do. People that are close to me in my administration know that I am demanding, that I work hard, and I also expect us to work hard. But I believe, Chicago State, that if we commit ourselves to excellence, if we commit ourselves to acting with integrity, that if we commit ourselves to act in love and not out of fear of retaliation, yes. Yes. that we will renew and transform this university. To Chicago State needs to be transformed to all of its honor and glory. Thank you. to invite Gerald Crawford up to close us out. Good afternoon, everybody. 
we just going to sing a song. That's all. <laughs> if y'all know the, all the verses, y'all can sing along with me. Can you turn it up, song? Yeah, you can put your hands together. It's all right. Get this right. You know it doesn't make much sense. There ought to be a law against anyone who takes offense at a day in your celebration. Cause we all know in the minds there ought to be a place and time that we will set aside just to show just how much we love you. And I'm sure you would agree that it would fit perfectly. That the time for some day, the day to Christmas ain't happy birthday. Come on. We know this part. Come on, happy birthday. <laughs> Second verse goes, I just never understood. How a man who died for good Could not have a thing that would Be set aside for his recognition Because it should never be that Just because some cannot see The dream as clear as he and That they and make it become an illusion And we all know that everything That he still for time will bring For peace in our hearts sing Say thanks for Dr. Luther King Happy birthday Happy birthday Happy birthday to you Happy birthday Happy birthday why has it never been a holiday? Yeah. Where peace is celebrated all throughout the world. Right here, just say, Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you. Y'all know this part. Happy, that's what y'all was waiting on. Birthday. Happy birthday. Oh, oh happy birthday. Oh, 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 oh. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birth, one more time, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, to you. Happy birthday. thank you all, thank you president.